hi everyone and welcome to the biannual BPE update um, for the Fedora release party. Um, so this is just a quick overview of everything that we're going to be um, discussing today. So we're going to be looking at the three Fedora projects that we worked on in quarter three of 2021. Um, we're going to have a quick look at what we are working on at the moment in CPE for Q4. Um, we're going to take a quick glance at Q1 for 2022 and an overview then of the process that kind of um, the, the quarterly planning process that kind of goes hand in hand with that. And then we will have some questions hopefully after all of this. Um, so just a quick introduction then to CPE, uh, the community platform engineering team. We're a Red Hat team that's dedicated to the Fedora and CentOS projects where we contribute to infrastructure and release engineering. So each quarter CPE together with the CentOS and Fedora community representatives choose initiatives to be worked on. And then the CPE team is split into multiple smaller sub teams that work on the chosen initiatives. So just a little bit about me, I probably haven't met most of you yet. So um, my name is Ellen. I'm working in the Waterford office here in Ireland and I have been interning with CPE um, since May of this year, uh, focusing on people and process management. Um, and throughout quarter three, I was acting as project manager for the three Fedora, initi Fedora initiatives that we're going to be looking at today. Um, during this time, I worked closely with Aoife Loney, she's our product owner, um, working on the processes um, to take the teams and the projects uh, to success. So feel free to reach out uh, either on Gchat, email, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, feel free to reach out at any time. So these are our three Fedora projects that we worked on in Q3. Um, the first is Metrics for Apps in OpenShift. Um, that was worked on by David, Bipple and Akashti. The second was Data Nomer, Data Grapper. Um, that was Aurelian, Ryan, James and Lenka. And then last but not least was DNF Counting which was worked on by Niels, Adam, and Patrick. Um, perfect. So metrics for apps on OpenShift. Um, this project was a way to gather metrics on applications that use OpenShift in Fedora. So the goal of this initiative was to deploy OpenShift 4 in Fedora infrastructure and start using Prometheus as a monitoring tool for apps to be deployed on OpenShift. So the team deployed OCP 4.8 in staging and production. And they configured a cluster with OAuth OpenShift container storage and other needed operators and configs to support Fedora workloads. They automated the process of OCP deployed with Ansible and deployed and configured the user workload monitoring stack. So very well done to them. That was a really successful project. Um, secondly, then we had Datanomer and Data Grapper version two. So Datanomer is the DB used to store messages on the Fedora message bus. Data Grapper then is the API with a web GUI that allows users to find messages stored on Datanomer. The goal of this initiative then was to upgrade these applications to use Fedora messaging and increase the performance of applications for their users. So the team um, upgraded both Datanomer and Datagrapper to use Timescale DB, and both of those are now also running in OpenShift. The prior solution was slow and inoptimal. inoptimal. Um, it was a database structure that wasn't optimal for storing current amounts of data and we wanted to optimize these services for a faster and, and better performing messages retrieval system within Fedora. Um, we chose TimescaleDB as it's an open source relational database for storing time ser series data um, and TimescaleDB is a PostgreSQL extension that allows us to take care of large amounts of data that we generate and maintain an SQL compatible interface for applications. So again, very well done to the team. Last but not least then, we have DNN, DNF counting. Um, this was used to obtain data for how Fedora is consumed by users. And the goal of this initiative was to make the retrieval and counting of data more reliable and efficient while preventing timeouts and crashes. 
Uh, so the team packaged it as an RPM. They deployed scripts and cleaned them up. Uh, they streamlined failures, notifications, and leveraged data number DB for storing messages in the Fedora message bus for sending. Um, they removed manual intervention when programs crashes, and they added CI tests. So the team set out to increase its performance, robustness, and make potential problems easier to follow. And this was achieved by sending out messages on the Fedora messaging bus. Um, so the messages are now stored in data number and can be retrieved with data grapper and are accessible in the event of a problem. Again, very well done. So looking at Q4 then, uh, we are currently working on two staffed projects. The first of which is Fedora Core OS pipeline migration. So the aim of this project is to make Fedora and the Core OS pipeline more integrated within the Fedora community and to leverage the new OCP4 cluster in Fedora Infra and migrate a pipeline here. And then the second of our initiatives this quarter is CentOS Duffy CI. Um, other CI tenants and upstream projects will be able to use Duffy CI more easily and readily. And this also allows other cl cloud images to be used or consumed from Duffy. So there is no maintenance or uploading for or removing. And it's a bring your own cloud image. Also in CPE at the moment, uh, during this quarter, we are working on CentOS Stream and ELN and the infrastructure and release engineering day-to-day -day work continues as well. So then just to take a very high level glance at potentially what we may work on in Q1 of 2022. So we're in the very initial stages of starting to scope some projects for that quarter um, and the planning uh, will take place for that in mid-December of this quarter. So potentially we're currently starting to scope with uh, Bodhi upgrades and FMN um, for potentially running with those early next year. Uh, next quarter, we'll also continue to work on CentOS Stream and DLN. We'll continue to work on infrastructure and release engineering work on a day-to-day -day, and also Apple and automotive upstream development. So then just to take a quick look um, at the over, uh, take an overview of the process that we go through during quarterly planning. So it's a three-step um, process. We start initially by scoping the process. The initiative is reviewed by the wider CPE team. Any technical requirements are discussed then. Um, any deliverables are estimated with the ARC team and they can do, uh, undertake an investigation. Um, and all stakeholder groups or requesters, requesters are informed um, and their expectations are discussed then, then at that point as well. And then we go to quarterly planning. So projects are investigated by ARC, um, all requester and stakeholder expectations hopefully have been satisfied and planning initiative takes place. Um, we w work with the wider CPE team and stakeholder groups to uh, prioritize um, each initiative. And then the initiatives are put into tickets and repos. Um, the management team and RP Oh, Aoife, they work together to measure these initiatives towards mission statements and then um, prioritize them accordingly. So we are at question time. Hopefully, if you have any questions, um, if I'm unable to answer, I will take note of them and get an answer back to you. Or I think some of the team are in the chat today. So hopefully they might be able to answer your questions there. Um, but thank you everyone very much for listening and taking the time to join us. And thank you to Marie, um, Ben and Matthew for putting this together and for having me today. So first question, James, what does CPE stand for? So community platform engineering. If you have any other questions, feel free to add them or we can come back to them at another time. Uh, 
Uh, okay, Matthew, how can we make non-project CPE work more visible? That's really interesting, actually. Um, that's something we could definitely open the floor to. Um, I think we do a very good job within CPE on a weekly basis. Um, we host a weekly call um, and everybody speaks about the work that they've been doing throughout the week. So maybe there's a an option to maybe discuss that with the wider community. So Zach, how can we create an open ship single node cluster with Fedora? So that's a technical question. Hopefully there is a reply there from Vipul. Yes, thank you, Vipul. So there's some questions in the chat as well. Rupert, do you publish the Jira boards on roadmap support or work? Um, we don't typically use Jira um, for the quarterly planning. We use Mira boards. Um, Eva makes those available at the time, um, and we yeah we have public either GitHub boards or Packet boards as well. Okay, Matthew, if groups in the community have a project they would like CP to work on, how should they propose that? Okay, so um, if that is our product owner, owner um, I would maybe get in contact with her and send it to her, and then it can be added to either the backlog or she can hand it on to ARC. We can um, invest, do an investigation there at that point. Hey, uh, I do have some points to add, if you don't mind, Ellen. Yeah, please. Go ahead, Pippo. And sorry if we all hear Ellen's voice in my microphone. I'm using speaker. I was not prepared for this. So uh, okay. Matthew asked, uh, how do community come up, come to us with new projects? We do have initiative repository where you can open an issue and we work with you to refine exactly what the initiative is. And there's an actual process of how we take those initiatives. Uh, our product owner, as Ifa mentioned, uh, sorry, as Ellen mentioned, is Ifa, and she takes those initiative requests. She works them through refines and works with the team and other stakeholders, which was Federal Council uh, and CentOS board and internal Red Hat stakeholders, to prioritize those initiatives. And depending on our strength of how many developers and operations are uh, operation, operation members are free to work on, we take those initiatives every quarter. Uh, all of these initiatives, most of them at least come through the same process. And I'll be sharing the repository link where you can open new issues for initiatives in the chat in uh, a minute. And another question about uh, uh, in, uh, using uh, OpenShift on Fedora. Uh, sorry, yeah, OpenShift uh, runs on Red Hat Core OS. And I'm not sure, I think five or six is the minimum node requirement between compute node and control nodes together. I'll also share the link in chat of exactly minimum requirement of OpenShift. Thank you, Vepo. I think all questions have been answered so far. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um,
Um, Rupert, I didn't see a roadmap um, for Arch64 here. Does that get done by another team? Um, I'm not actually sure the answer of that question. If anyone in the chat has that answer. Um, Sorry, can... what question is that, Ellen? It's in the chat, um, Rupert Bailey. I didn't see a roadmap for Arch64 here. Does that get done by another team? Uh, I'm not sure Matthew what the question said. is about like, exactly where R64, is it the image release? Yeah. Um, Thank you, Matthew, for providing that answer. Uh, in chat, I have shared where you can create an initiative request, by the way. Thank you, Apple. Do we have any other questions or has everybody um, had their question answered at least? Yeah, I don't see any more traffic here. So I think we're, we are good to then. Thanks a lot, Ellen, by the way, since I'm on the call. Yeah, no, thank you, Vipal. Thank you for your help. Um, yeah, thank you very much, everyone. And um, hopefully, I'll see you all again soon.